pushed to its absolute limit. June Mountain's perfect half pipe is where 60 of the world's best snowboarders, men and women, have come to compete in the OP Pro of Snowboarding. The name of the game is Huge Air, and the players are here. Brushy, Palmer, Scott, Selaznik, Taggart, Bassich, and Dunn. Stay tuned as the OP Pro of Snowboarding takes off on ESPN. Pipe's excellent, man. It's going off. This pipe's going off. It's so big and vert. It's going off. Everybody and welcome to the Inyo National Forest and June Mountain Ski Resort for the OP Pro of Snowboarding. I'm your host, Todd Harris, joined by Fran Richards of Snowboarding Magazine. And Fran, we are high in the Inyo National Forest for an event that really deals with altitude, the half-pipe competition. Half-pipe riding is the most exciting aspect of snowboarding. It's a gully dug out of snow on a ski hill where riders go up and down the walls and combine tricks of surfing and skateboarding. The sport of snowboarding has really taken off in the last few years, especially half-pipe riding. And Fran, we have some of the world's best here with us today. We have the very best in the world here today. Overall, women's world champion Michelle Taggart is here, along with the up-and-comer Jana Mayan from Southern California. In the men's division, we have the best half-pipe riders in the world. Brian Aguchi, who just won the World Cup. We've also got uh, Jeff Brushy, Sean Palmer. We're looking for Noah Selaznik, the skate pro, who's also a pro snowboarder. It's going to be a hot event. All right, regardless of your talent level, the conditions always factor in, but today they are absolutely great. Couldn't ask for better conditions than what we have today. We had a half-pipe machine in here last night that dug a perfect half-pipe. The snow is hard, it's fast, the walls are big, it's going to be a competition with big air. All right, when we come back, we'll take a look at some of the preliminary rounds, so stay with us for the OP Pro of snowboarding. A puzzle. With so many stomach remedies around, how do you know which you can take for heartburn? And for diarrhea. And for upset stomach. You take Pepto-Bismol to relieve most any common stomach problem. Heartburn, upset stomach, and diarrhea. So who needs anything else? That is a puzzle. Pepto-Bismol is the only one you need. Today's new car finishes are more exotic and lustrous than ever. So before you try one of those trendy colored car waxes, consider this. Colored car waxes contain dyes. Dyes that can stain your car's finish. Introducing Rain Dance Light Car and Dark Car Formula Polish. They're specially formulated to enhance your car's true color, not mask it. Rain Dance Light has optical brighteners for a cleaner, brighter shine. Rain Dance Dark removes haze and film for a deeper, wet look shine. So choose new Rain Dance Light Car Formula or new Dark Car Formula because your car is too young to die. Bring out your car's true color. Call 1-800-345-RAIN for the store near you. This week on Speed Week, a preview of the IndyCar Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach, the first Union 400 from North Wilkesboro, and highlights of the Formula One Grand Prix of Europe. Speed Week, Saturday night at 7.30 Eastern. Welcome back to June Mountain in the OP Pro of Snowboarding. The half-pipe competition features 48 of the world's best in a complicated double elimination format. Again, a competitor must lose twice to be eliminated from the event. The competitors are judged by a five-man panel and will receive one to a hundred points. Based on originality, amplitude, difficulty, variety, and execution of maneuvers, the high and the low score will be dropped and the three remaining scores will be added. A perfect score would be 300 points. The first round of competition saw crowd favorite Jeff Brushy fail to show up for his heat, automatically moving him to the loser's bracket. And with 16 rounds of competition, he had a long way to go with no room for mistakes. After six straight heat wins on the way to the final, Jeff Brushy and pro skate star Noah Selaznik 
would both bow out with two losses. Salaznik spent three rounds in the winner's bracket and four in the loser's, but his heat against J.J. Collier and Andy Hetzel would end his day. Hetzel and Collier would move ahead to meet Brian Aguchi and Sean Palmer, who were also fighting to stay alive in the loser's bracket. Sean Palmer excited the judges and the crowd in his previous run doing foot plants or boneless maneuvers at the bottom of the pipe. However, he would not be so lucky this time. Meanwhile, Andy Hetzel from Tucson, Arizona would also drop out with his second loss. Winning the heat was Brian Aguchi, the spin doctor as he's known from Moore Park, California. And also advancing was J.J. Collier. He was stoked with this pipe as he headed towards the final. Well, th this thing is so fun, it'd almost be better just to jam it, you know, and, and instead of just doing a contest, the whole strategy thing is just to uh, try to get it mixed up as usual, you know. The, the airs are going to be real easy to pull. There's not going to be any, it's not a real technical pipe, it's just a perfect, fun pipe. Uh, you can do anything. Meanwhile, in the winner's bracket, two riders still continued with zero losses, Jimmy Scott and J.D. Platt. Scott had consistently scored runs in the 250-point range all day. A 24-year-old residing in Aspen, Colorado, Scott practices in a pipe similar to this. It's, it's actually really nice. The pipe I'm riding in Aspen is a little bit larger in tranny, but this is really consistent. It's really good. Good for the event. Granted, it's a great pipe, but does he have a strategy? Just have fun, you know. It's a ride pipe. Just ride the pipe for what it is. Don't try and do what other people are doing. Scott again would be the victor and move directly to the final, while J.D. Platt's first loss of the day would drop him to the loser's bracket to try and fight his way back to the final. Platt now waits to face the winner of the next heat between Brian Aguchi and J.J. Collier. The loser of that heat will take the fourth place spot. The June Mount Resort sits on the eastern slope of the High Sierra mountain range of Central California and boasts some of the best skiing and snowboarding terrain to be found anywhere in the state. The resort is made up of more than 2,500 vertical feet of tree-line runs, seven lifts, and a QMC tram, a ski lodge and facilities such as restaurants, rental and repair shops, and a daycare center. In addition, instruction is offered for children and adults in both skiing and snowboarding. June Mountain has always been in the forefront of the snowboarding revolution, being one of the first skiing facilities to feature a permanent half-pipe and an enthusiastic supporter of snowboarding competitions. Ocean Pacific was quick to take advantage of this fact, and consequently, June Mountain has been the featured locale of a number of OP Pro snowboarding events. Today's competition is further evidence of June Mountain's commitment to the growth and promotion of the sport of snowboarding. More half-pipe action when we return. Who would you be if you were rich? I always wanted to be Henry Ford. I'd be an up-to-date uh, Rudolph Valentino with a tent in Saudi Arabia and um, about 12 wives. I'd be Clint Eastwood. Donald Palmer. I'd like to be Errol Flynn. I'd be Don Corleone. If it was anybody that I wanted to be, it would be Joe DiMaggio. I'd be Johnny Cash. Fred Astaire. And Ginger Rogers. I'd still be Nectar. Who else? This is it fantastic to be rich. Every week, you pick up your local newspaper, and it's the same old story. All the dealers have the lowest prices of the year this week only. Well, do they really? Just bring the newspaper into Bob Chambers' Ford Honda Chevrolet. Let's compare their prices with our everyday low prices. When you get to the bottom line, you'll see it doesn't take a come-on newspaper ad to prove that Bob Chambers is the only name you need to know when shopping for a car or truck. One name means more savings. Bob Chambers, Lower State Street, Augusta dream was to have the whistle in the long pants. Hey, that's it. I wanted to coach basketball. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind. It cannot touch my heart. And it cannot touch my soul. To join Jim Valvano in the fight against cancer, call 1-800-872-8300. With each donation of $25, you'll receive a Jimmy V Team t-shirt. Don't give up, Jimmy V. Don't ever give up. He's San Diego's triple crown threat. Gary Sheffield leads the Padres against Andy Van Slyke and the Pirates. Tonight, live on ESPN Tuesday Night Baseball. Welcome back to the 1993 OP Pro Snowboarding at June Mountain, California. We are now set for a great heat between 
Brian Agucci and JJ Collier. The loser will stay put and take fourth place for the day. The winner goes on and has a chance to the finals. First up, Brian Agucci from Moore Park, California, 19 years old, a first year pro, facing JJ Collier from Banner Elk, North Carolina, who now trains in Breckenridge. JJ is 21 years old, so Fran, this should be a great heat. And first out of the gate should be the Spin Doctor. Hey, Brian Aguchi has really poured it on this year. This is his first year on the tour, and he's got a lot of energy. You can see it in his runs. Oh, a big frontside air there. Gucci is going to be hard to beat. The guy's got all the speed, lots of power, and he can really put on the spinning maneuvers. That's why they call him the spin doctor. And one thing about Aguchi, he doesn't get as many hits as everyone else because he gets so much air and he carries so far down the pipe. Aguchi uses his momentum and speed to be able to pull off all those spinning maneuvers. You'll see he's got back-to-back -back 540s here. That's very difficult in a steep pipe. And one more 540. Little trouble on the landing, but a hot run. All right, a hot run indeed. Brian Aguchi doesn't look like he's so happy with it. Or maybe that's just sheer exhaustion from all those spins. You see up at the top here, he's got that tail grabbing, nose poking, front side air. He's going to follow it up here with some of the spinning tricks he's known for. Brian Aguchi from Moore Park, California scores a 253. We will see if that's good enough to put him into the next round against J.D. Platt. But again, Brian Aguchi, a big day. He's got to be tired with all that spinning. And the man who wants to knock him off, J.J. Collier. J.J.'s style and strategy is much different from the Gooch. You're going to find a guy who's going to go for the total number of difficult maneuvers that he can possibly pull off. He's going for execution, originality, difficulty. There's a nice 540, a difficult trick, but he's also pulling out the stops. That's a shifty. That's one of the new school non-grabbing trips, followed by a frontside stiffy. Also a very difficult maneuver, Todd. JJ really uses the same line he's been using all day. You're going to see a lot of the same tricks. Hopefully he's perfected them as the day's gone on, but he really gets the most out of the pipe. He's going to get about twice as many hits in this pipe as a Gooch did. He won't get the air and the amplitude, but he's certainly going to get the variety. We'll see what the judges think. JJ Collier with a very classy run for a very classy guy from Banner Elk, North Carolina. And JJ also has had a long day, so stamina really has played a part in this. This 540 is absolutely perfect. He lands right on the edge of the pipe. That's extra difficult. So that's going to add some extra points for execution. That frontside stiffy was well performed. Well performed indeed by J.J. Collier, who picks up a 246, which is not enough to beat Brian Aguchi. So it's Aguchi versus Platt in the next round to face Jimmy Scott in the finals. We've got a short break in the men's half-pipe competition, but they weren't the only ones impressing the judges here at Junior Day, Fran. The women's half-pipe competition was held earlier today, and it was exciting as usual. The event featured 12 women competing in the same double elimination format as the men. The winner of each round moves towards the finals via the winner's bracket, while the loser has to fight her way back the long way through the consolation bracket. Shannon Dunn from Steamboat Springs, Colorado is always a tough competitor in the half pipe, but her score of 224 would not be enough to make the final. Tina Bassich's 234, however, would put her up against the winner of the loser's bracket final between 1992 women's overall champion Michelle Taggart and Shannon Dunn. Michelle Taggart, known for her big aerials, would miss advancement to the final by one point, 230 to Shannon Dunn's 231. Shannon, despite her loss in the previous round, really put it together against Michelle. Um, this pipe is just, you can just kind of ride it. It's just, it's a really good pipe and it's really smooth, so you just kind of have fun with it. Best of luck to Shannon Dunn and Tina Bassich, who will meet later on in the women's final. Shifting our attention back to the top of the pipe, we are now set for the loser's bracket final. Brian Aguchi taking on J.D. Platt, the winner going on to the final to face Jimmy Scott. J.D. Platt is probably the strongest all-around competitor we have competing in the half pipe today. Not only is he a threat in almost any half-pipe competition he enters, but he's very strong in the alpine discipline. His overall board control really helps him in tight situations. All right, J.D. Platt from Bend, Oregon, doing a lot of work up at Mount Bachelor, but now he's set at June at the top of the pipe. At age 22, J.D. is almost a veteran in this sport. The guy's going to have to really pump up all the speed and get as much air as he can to beat a gooch. Go good back that air right there, Todd. All right, he looks good. And a lot of these guys have had several runs today, but they're showing no sign of fatigue, and they're really pushing it up for the amplitude. Well, even in the summertime, J.D. gets a lot of time in on the half-pipe. Whether he's on a skateboard or inline skates, J.D.'s really used to the half-pipe. Winter's on a snowboard, and summer's on skates. He looks good on his board today, though. He's pulling off some big maneuvers, but I think he knows the Gooch is going to pull off some big ones as well. Well, he's got a lot of hits, Todd, and that's going to get him some points. So we'll have to see whether that big air or a lot of hits is going to score higher. All right, we'll wait and see what the judges have to say, but J.D. Platt from Bend, Oregon, finishes his run, hoping he's good enough to hold off Brian Gucci, and he had some great moves. 
J.D. Platt's big backside error was a very strong error, but not technically difficult enough, I think, Todd, to advance. All right, he'll take home a 253 and sit and wait and see what the spin doctor, Brian Aguchi, can pull off. The winner again moves on to face Jimmy Scott in the final. And here he is, Brian Aguchi from Moore Park, California, set to take his run. Brian Aguchi's really been pumping up the volume in this pipe. He keeps a lot of speed. He's seeing that tail grab in air. Big front side tail grab, really clean. You can see he just flows the pipe with lots of air and speed, Todd. That's really essential for a high score. A lot of Brian Aguchi's game plan comes from revving up the crowd with huge air, and he is doing just that right here, pumping up huge air on this beautiful pipe. The spin doctor still got enough speed for that 540 down at the bottom of the pipe. The 540 follows it back up with a 360. He's going all out here at the end of the pipe. There it is, an alley-oop backside air, a very difficult maneuver, Todd. Brian Aguchi possibly saving his most technical stuff at the bottom of the pipe where the judges can get a better look at it. He seems to be pretty happy about it, and his mates seem to be pretty happy about it. He senses victory, and he could possibly be moving on against Jimmy Scott. Brian Aguchi had three big airs here that really made the difference. The first, that tail grabbing, nose poking, frontside air. The second was a big backside air. And then down at the bottom of the pipe, he really pulled it all out here with a 540. So it's official, the first year pro, Brian Aguchi gets a 258. J.D. Platt had a great run at 253, but it wasn't enough. So Brian Aguchi comes from the loser's bracket all the way to the top, and he will now face Jimmy Scott at the 1993 OP Pro Snowboarding Finals. When we come back, we'll have the men's finals as well as the women's finals. Stay with us. Here on the set, when the lights come up, and the camera starts to roll. There's no place to hide. And even one flake of dandruff, even one, can ruin it all. That's why I use Head & Shoulders. You know, it's even better than it was just a couple of years ago. Today's Head & Shoulders gets to 10 times more of the places dandruff starts. Put it to the test. Prove it to yourself. Head & Shoulders and Head & Shoulders 2-in-1. Because great hair can't have flakes. Hey, when I was coming up, I walked 15 miles in the snow every day to practice. There were no locker rooms. The balls had laces, and the shoes were made of canvas. What's canvas? And there were no foot lockers. No foot no lockers. Foot lockers. No, foot no, lockers. Foot lockers. no foot lockers. No foot locker. Whoa, you guys had it rough. Nobody's got more basketball shoes or more experience selling basketball shoes than foot locker, where it all begins. You guys have commercials, right? Cold, cold, yeah, no heat. Now, Sports Illustrated brings you all the thrills of the Cowboys' super season. In this sensational new video, Cowboys Super Bowl Champion. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. The best way to get inside the action for over 24 million readers. The boys are back, so call this toll-free number now and let Sports Illustrated make sure you're with them every step of the way on their run to glory. Call now, and you'll also get this special commemorative issue free with your paid subscription. It captures the Cowboys in championship style. And get 54 issues of Sports Illustrated for only $1.39 an issue. Save over 52% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Your two free gifts give you the thrills of the past year. Dallas, your Cowboys are the champions. Sports Illustrated gives you the great moments yet to come. Nobody's into sports like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the 1993 OP Pro Snowboarding at June Mountain, California. I'm your host, Todd Harris, joined by Fran Richards of Snowboarding Magazine. And Fran, we are now set for the women's final. We have Shannon Dunn, the 20-year-old from Steamboat Springs, Colorado, going up against Tina Bassett, the 23-year-old from Fair Oaks, California. And this should be a great final. These women are used to meeting each other in the finals. In fact, last year, Shannon Dunn was the overall world champion, while Tina Bassett was the U.S. national champion. So let's see who has the best runs today, Todd. Shannon Dunn in the pipe, making her first hits, and she looks good. She's going to go for the back-to-back -back air technique. She's going to see how much speed she can get. A nice backside air there for Shannon. One of the things Shannon is really strong with is the spinning maneuvers, Todd. She's one of the few women that does 540s in competition regularly without any problem at all. And there's one right there. Shannon Dunn from Steamboat Springs, Colorado, having no problem with this altitude. A lot of riders do, but not Shannon Dunn. There's that uh, half cab. That's looking really good, too. Another half cab. A little problem with the landing right there. That's going to cost her a lot of points. She's lost some speed. All right, Shannon Dunn taking what little speed she has left across the finish line. She will now have to wait and see what Tina Bassett will come up with. 
And uh, let's take a look at a few of her hits. She had a technically difficult run here. She had a really nice backside air with a difficult grab. And then the 540 looked like it was executed very well. The question is whether her sketch in the bottom will hurt her. All right, Shannon Dunn will sit and wait with a score of 221. Tina Bassett now is poised at the top of the hill, has no idea what Shannon Dunn scores, but she knows she has to go off big. So here she goes, Tina Bassett in the pipe. Tina's a very consistent performer in the half pipe. She's going to take a more careful line. But we're going to see a lot more aerial maneuvers, Todd. I've got a feeling she's going to hit that wall a few more times. Tina Bassett's now living in Midville, Utah, which is a suburb of Salt Lake City, so the altitude, again, not playing a factor for her, and she is going off huge for the women's competition. That was a really nice indie grab back there, and following up with another front side air. We've seen back-to-back -back aerial maneuvers. She's maintaining a lot of speed. She looks very strong here, Todd. This is going to be a high-scoring run. Not a technically difficult run, but lots of aerial maneuvers. There's an air to fake you right there, a difficult maneuver. Tina really getting the most for her money here. She knows she has to pull off a pretty decent score to top Shannon Den as she finishes up. And I don't know if she did it, but it will be close, Fran. She's got a lot of aerial maneuvers in here, a big front side air, but I don't know if she's going to have the speed to take it. What do you think, Todd? Too close to call. However, the judges say Tina Bassett is the winner with a score of 226 over Shannon Dunn's 221, a very close competition indeed. So it's Tina Bassett on top, followed by Dunn, Michelle Taggart, Jana Mayan, and in fifth place, Crystal Aldana. Besides the half pipe, most competitors enjoy free riding. One of the best known free riders in the world is Damian Sanders. While from time to time you'll catch him competing in the half pipe, more often than not he'll be looking for places to catch big air. Snowboarding um, is more of a fun type sport and the competitive side is, is a good time, but you don't really have to be so competitive in snowboarding and I think that's what's cool about it. You just go out there and have a good time with your friends. So. Seeing it go through all the years, and I'm kind of happy to be part of this sport. It's just a lot more fun than a lot of the sports I've seen. The attitude is more fun. Everybody's into it just having a good time. I think that's what it's all about. When free riding gets steep and dangerous, it becomes extreme. As an extremist, Damien's exploits have brought him fame and fortune, not to mention injury. Um, I had a knee problem last year. I was having a big air competition up in Canada with a guy named Mad Matt, and we kept pushing each other to go higher and higher, and uh, pretty soon I went too high for my own good and blew out my right knee, tore the ligaments and stuff. But I had the reconstructive surgery and come back pretty strong. It feels really good now. I've seen a lot of athletes now who are doing really well with the uh, anterior cruciate problems, and so I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. I think uh, if you do the therapy right and everything, you come back strong as ever. Damian Sanders taking the sport of snowboarding to new extremes. Best of luck to Damian as he continues his road to complete recovery. We are now set for the men's final. It's Jimmy Scott up against Brian Aguchi. Jimmy Scott, the 24-year-old from Long Beach, California, who is also a pro skater as well as a pro skateboarder. And Fran, this should be a great heat with Scott going up against Aguchi. Jimmy Scott is the man to beat today, a very consistent competitor. In order for Brian Aguchi to pass him and become the champion, he is going to have to beat him twice in a row. All right, the pressure really on Brian Aguchi as Jimmy Scott takes the pipe, and all he has to do is put together a flawless run, and he's got it in the bag. Jimmy's been really consistent all day today, and it looks like he's continuing with this run. He's got a lot of power, a lot of speed, a giant frontside stiffy, a very difficult maneuver, Todd. Jimmy Scott with more than a dozen runs today. He is still undefeated, and I know he'd like...